Hey everybody, this is Glenn and welcome to Glenn's Q-Town Kitchen, your source for good recipes. If you're old like me, you remember that clip from the Little Rascals uh, when they were served mush in the orphanage and uh, the milk was spoiled, uh, as you can tell. Um, so today we're going to be making two things. Uh, the first thing is hasty pudding and uh, it's just a corn uh, meal and water mixture and that's what they called mush back in the uh, colonial days. Um, it was also brought to the um, 1930s, I guess, around that area. When the Depression hit, uh, a lot of families lived on that mush. And um, that's what they ate a lot of. So uh, the kids were really sick of it, like you can see in the video there. Um, so started out in colonial days, corn was a huge thing in the colonial days and they made a lot of stuff out of it. Corn, pumpkins, cranberries, that kind of stuff. You see at Thanksgiving. Um, so let's see what we got here. We got, um, so was, as I said, it starts out with hasty pudding, but we're gonna actually take that a step further and make fried cornmeal mush. So, but you could take the hasty pudding and eat that as well with some milk and some butter on top. It's really good. But again, we're gonna take that one step further and we're gonna fry it into uh, what they call fried cornmeal mush. And the hasty pudding is named hasty pudding, obviously, because it's made cheaply and quickly. And uh, like I said, that's something they did in the colonial days. It's something they did during the Depression era. So let's get started. All right, we have very simple ingredients, as I said. We're gonna use um, cornmeal. Um, there's fine ground cornmeal and there's um, medium ground cornmeal. I use a medium ground and this is um, stone uh, ground. So they actually grind it on the stone, so it's kind of uneven. So that's what I use, cornmeal. One cup of that we're gonna use. We're going to use one teaspoon of salt. I like sea salt. We're going to use four cups of water. Let me grab that. Four cups of water. And one teaspoon of sugar. And that is it. So let's get started. Okay, in this pot, I'm going to have, I have three of the four cups of water. So three cups in here, I'm reserving one cup of water. I'm going to bring this to a boil. And while that water's coming to a boil, I have the one cup of uh, cornmeal in here and the one teaspoon of sugar. And I'm just going to give that a stir here. Just get that lightly incorporated. And then to that, I'm going to add my reserved one cup of water. And we're going to give this a mix until it's thoroughly mixed in here. This is probably not the way they made it back in the Depression era. They just threw it together. <laughs> I don't think they took time to reserve uh, water or anything, but this does make it a lot better. So I'm just going to give this a nice whisk here. Get it nice and thickened up here. Then we're going to set this aside. Okay, our water's come to a boil here. I'm going to turn it down to uh, medium heat until those bubbles kind of start subsiding there a little bit. 
mixing the uh, cornmeal mush again, just to get it reincorporated here. Give this probably a few seconds to go down because I don't want to pour this in there and have this go all over the place. So. It's almost there. There we go. I think we can get it now. Let's do that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape down the sides here first, get everything in there. And we're going to slowly, want to slowly get this in here. That will avoid lumps. There we go. All right. Almost got it roll in there. All right, good. I think that's good. Let me get my whisk. Get this uh, whisk here. And I'm going to turn the heat back up to a boil. So it's going to go on high. And this is a good stir here. Once this comes up to a boil, which it should pretty quickly here, you can see it coming up already. We're going to turn it down to a simmer, a very low simmer. I'm going to cover this and I'm going to stir it every once in a while. And what I want is to be able to have a wooden spoon stand up in it. See, right now it's not standing up. By the time we get through with this, I promise it will, this will stand up in there. So, let's get this up to a boil. Let me get my cover. I'm going to turn this down. Oh, it's spattering on the I don't want that. Okay. Yeah. Take it off for a second here. Yeah. That's all right. Clean it up. All right. I think it's covered. No, that's too big. Let me grab a cover here. Yeah. Let me get my on it. We're turning this way down to a very low simmer and we're going to let it go stirring every once in a while until like I said that spoon can stand up in it. Probably about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay we got about 10-15 minutes left on the uh, porridge mush boiling there. So um, what I'm going to do is prep my stuff. So you can do two things. You can use a loaf pan. Uh, what I like to use is a can uh, that I hollowed out and took the lid off and I used one of those um, what do you call it uh, can openers that don't leave a rough ridge around the edge so I won't cut myself <laughs> so that's what I use because I like the round and when we cut them up they're gonna be round instead of square but if you don't have that use a loaf pan so first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little tab of butter here and I'm gonna rub it all in here and we're gonna get it all like I said, you still got to be careful. You don't want to cut yourself on any of this metal here. So just take your time. Not a, not a rush on this. And one thing I did forget to tell you is uh, when you're boiling the water, that's when you should add your teaspoon of salt. I forgot to do show you that. But the, after the water's boiled, before you add the porridge in there or the um, cornmeal mixture, make sure you put the one teaspoon of salt in that water. And uh, that way... It won't have a bland. All right, let's see. Take a little more down here. I'm gonna spray this with pan too, so. But I just wanna make sure I get a good coating so that this releases pretty easily. Cause you don't want it stuck in here. And if it be careful, it can, even though I cut use that, um, can opener with the easy open thing it's still definitely all right around there and around there i think we're good there let me wash my hands to confirm 
that we got enough in there. I am gonna, like I said, spray this down with a little Pam inside here. So make sure I got my button. I always do that. The button's over here and squirts over there instead of where I want it to. That's a good coating there. So let's get that side and get a little bit on this side. And I'm gonna take a paper towel and make sure we get that all in there and get the excess off. I don't want a lot in there, so. There we go. So let that sit until we, um, our mush is ready. And it's got about nine minutes left. Okay, we've been going a little longer than I thought, about an hour or so. But as you can see, it's thick, and as I promised, the food is, food is standing up. So, uh, almost standing up, but that's perfect. This is how we want it, nice and thick like that. All right, so what we have here is our mold. Like I said, if you wanted to use a loaf pan, you could do that, you just butter that. Um, like I said, instead of getting circles, you get squares when you cut it up tomorrow. So let me get my, um, rubber spatula out here and we're going to carefully try to get into this can here without getting it all over the place that's the challenge right now okay so we're going to take a little bit at each time and we're going to put it right in the can here Now, like I said, you can eat this just like this. A little milk, a little butter on it. Let's get this off here. Hot. Ooh. All right. A little milk, a little butter, and it's really good. So. Get in there. I'll make sure I get this all out as much as I can to fill this jar up here. I'm gonna have to tap this down a little bit once we get it in here. Make sure I get everything out of here. I'm close, but we'll get this last bit out here. And then scrape this off. There we go. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do? I'll put my pot back here for a second. Let me get this up. And we're gonna just tap this down and make sure it's all in there firmly. All right. So that's what we have here. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is let this cool off. Anyway try to get this down even more because so we don't want pockets in there I want to make sure this is all the way through my tap it here to make sure it gets all the way down okay so I'm gonna let this cool I'm gonna stick it in the refrigerator overnight tomorrow morning we'll come back and we'll uh, finish these off well good morning okay so uh, last night we prepared our hasty pudding which is just a cornmeal mush. And um, I put it into this container here to form it into a mold because we're going to be frying it. So let's see if we can get it out of here. It might be a little bit of a challenge, but I think it should come out pretty easy. So just pressing down a little bit here. There we go. Look at that, perfect. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this on its side here. So we can cut it up into pieces here, on here. Okay, let me just give my hands a little quick wash. Okay, I'm just gonna take this side that's kind of uh, scraggly off from the top and just kind of even it out here. So I'm just gonna cut down gently on it. I'm using a uh, cake knife. So I'm just gonna throw that aside. So I want um, about quarter inch slices on these. So. Let's go down, and there we go. That's what we have here. So 
let me cut this up I'll do one more here and then this one you can just press down you don't have to cut really okay so let me go through and get the rest of these cut here and uh, we'll come back and start frying them up okay I'm turning your attention this way I have a pan here and um, to that pan I add about uh, a tablespoon of butter and we're going to let that melt down. So let that go melt down for a second and we'll come back. While that butter is melting, I'm going to show you how I prepare these. I have about four tablespoons of uh, just regular flour here. And I'm going to take this, one of these, and I'm just going to dip it in there. And make sure it gets coated pretty good. Get the sides here. Shake off the excess and I'm going to put it right there. So. And I'll do that with the rest of these. Into the flour. Make sure we get it all coated here. With the sides. And right there. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'll get all these done so that we can just fry them up. And as you can see, I got them all dusted with the flour and coated and uh, ready to go. So turn your attention over the stove again. I'm going to add a little bit more butter in there because we want this to be uh, fried. So let's let that melt here a little bit. It's almost ready. And to this butter I'm going to add corn oil. I can, I'm staying with the corn theme. I don't want to use olive oil or vegetable. You can use vegetable oil but corn oil would match pretty well with this because it's cornmeal mush and corn fried cornmeal mush. So I'm gonna add the oil to this, about the same amount of oil to butter. And that will keep the butter from burning. So I'm gonna let this get nice and hot too. Give it a few seconds and uh, when it stops sizzling, I'll know I'm ready to go. Okay, I got the butter melted. I'm gonna add a little bit more uh, corn oil, just a tiny bit. And we're gonna get that swirl around here. And it seems nice and hot, the pan, so I think we're ready to go and get these in here. So let me take my first one here, put it in here. Second one, put it in there. My third one, and we'll just stick with three for now so we don't overcrowd the pan. Because it'll be, when you overcrowd the pan, it'll be harder to. Uh, get up a little too crowded, so do that. Let me get these in the middle here, where it's hotter. I have this on like medium high heat. So we're gonna let this sit for five or so minutes and get nice and brown on the bottom. If these have been on a few minutes, I'm gonna turn them and see what they look like. So let's get under here. Try not to break them. Sometimes they break. But, oh, those look great. Perfect. Get this one here. Not as good as that one, but still looks good. Okay. Now we're going to do this side and get that nice side nice and brown too. Golden brown. Let's take a look at these on the bottom and see how they're coming out. Yeah, a little bit more, I think, what do you think? Like a nice and golden brown on both sides. So we'll let that go for a few more minutes here. All right, let's give these a flip and see what they look like now. Yeah, much better, okay, good. Nice, and the last one here. Always a tough one to get, there we go, okay. So I'm gonna remove these from the pan and I'm gonna put them in a plate here and we'll serve them up. All right, here we are. I'm just gonna do one for now. So what I normally do, it's nice and warm. I'm just gonna take a little piece of butter. I don't want a lot of butter on there. A little piece, melt it on there. Grab some maple syrup. And please use, for goodness sakes, please use real maple syrup, not the stuff you buy in the store, not that Aunt Jemima stuff, the log cabin. Real maple syrup, but this is Real cornmeal, real maple syrup, uh, both these real American products. 
I'm actually going to be baking some more corn stuff, uh, maybe some more maple stuff. I'm definitely going to do some pumpkin stuff before um, the fall is over. So stay tuned for some good shows coming up. So for this, I'm just going to, oh, that butter melted nicely, drizzle a little bit over this. And there you have a real colonial breakfast uh, from the uh, colonial days, from the depression days, etc. Again, you start out with a hasty pudding or cornmeal mush, and you put it into a mold, put it in the refrigerator, slice it, fry it, and that's what you get here. So um, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them. Again, if you go onto my uh, YouTube channel, Glenn's with apostrophe S, Q-Town Eats, please hit that subscribe button. I would love to get more subscribers. And I thank you for watching. Now let me dig in. Got myself a fork here, so the outside is nice and firm, crunchy, but the inside is real creamy. Uh, look at that. I'm gonna try to get a piece up for you here. If I can, but you can see how nice and creamy it is here. Nice and crunchy on the outside. Real good, let me give this a taste here. Mmm, great. Gotta try this. Great healthy breakfast. Great American breakfast. Again, um, this uh, all American cooking here, so until we meet again, I leave you with this Bible verse from John 6, 35. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Until we meet again, God bless.